This is Mario. Have you heard of him? Of course you have. You are human. So someone is a big fan of the franchise and also a very skilled programmer. <clears throat> Exclamation mark. I thought it'd be fun to challenge myself to program the OG Mario Bros game from scratch in 24 hours. And because I hit myself, I'll be coding not one, but two levels of the game. So make sure you grab your popcorns because we're going to be here for a while. So we're just going to start with the simple stuff. You know, creating a new project, setting our file structure, googling assets, stealing assets, and lastly, our boilerplate code. Now, first of all, our game is a platformer. And luckily for me, this is a game style I'm quite familiar with. So I guess I could just Yoink. But it's not still any if it's own code. So the game structure pretty much says all that's left is to make it look like Mario. Now you might be wondering, Divine, how do you convert this monstrosity into this? Well, it's actually quite simple. You cut out certain parts you want from the sprite sheets and then just draw it on the screen. Now how you do it will depend on what tool you're using. As you can tell, I'm coding JavaScript and it has an inbuilt function in the context API of our canvas that basically gets the job done for us. It has eight arguments. The first four is where in the image we want to cut out with the size of the cutout respectively. And the last four being where in our canvas we want to draw it and the size we want the drawing to be. But this is just for static images. What about animations? Well, it's the same process but a bit more complex. Rather than just drawing it on the screen, we'll have to throw in a function that loops through each frame of the animation. Now, I'm not going to bore you with explaining the math involved, mostly because you don't really need to understand it. These algorithms were created by math experts, so memorizing it is just fine. All you do need to know is that stagger frames is how fast you want the animation to run, and frames is how many frames the animation has. Easy. Now that we can draw our sprites and animations, we need a way to tell which sprites should be drawn depending on what Mario is doing. A method I like to use is something I call state. It's where we create an object in our Mario class with Boolean properties and their values will determine which sprites should be drawn. For example, if we set its idle to true and its right to true, that means we want Mario standing facing right. So we draw this sprite. If we set its moving to true and its left to true, it means we want Mario running towards the left. And yeah, you get the gist. So we just slap all that logic in our code base and we get it's me, Mario! We just need to do the exact same thing for the entire background. <sighs> okay guys, I'll be honest. I knew this part was going to take me a lot of time, so I made sure I had to prepare the cutouts and style coordinates before I started the challenge. <laughs> Well, what do you think I am? The Flash? I have one day to code an entire game. Of course I'll need prep time. Anyways, with the backgrounds ready, we only have the logic state of things to deal with. Like the characters, power-ups, and so on. Let's start with the most hated character, the Goombas. Now, luckily for me, these guys are dumb as hell. They have like zero intelligence. They move left by default, and they only move the other way if there's a blockade. Meaning if there's a pit, they just... Yeah, and you kill them by bouncing on your head, so they're kinda easy to code. For movement, we set their X velocity to minus 1 by default, and if they collide with the left or right of any tile, we set them to move in the opposite direction. And to kill them, I added the dummy platform at the top of their heads, so if Mario jumps on it, they die. I did it this way because having direct contact with their head can also trigger the left and right collisions, meaning the jump will have to be very precise for the kill to work, which is what we don't want. Now the Koopas are just as dumb, just use the same code, but they are a bit stronger, so you have to jump on their heads 3 times before they die. So I added the Koopa jump counter in the character class, we increment the value for every jump and once it gets to 3, Koopa dies. Now the platform themselves have their own logic, but them either bounce or break when Mario hits their bottom. So to achieve this, we can add two properties to the tile class, its bounce and its break. By default their values will be false, and if there is any tile we want to have any of these effects, we set them to true. Then we create a bounce method, add a little bounce animation, and for the break method we add 4 new particle styles to the world, add gravity to them, set their x and y velocities to random values so they can spread out, and then remove them from the world after about 1.4 seconds, which should be enough time for the particles to reach the ground. And also the mystery boxes turn black when Mario hits them, but that's fairly straightforward to do. Next up we have power-ups. The power-ups are usually hidden in mystery boxes and are only revealed when they turn blank. So I added like an index with a unique number to all the tiles so I can identify which ones reveal which power-ups. Then add a condition to check if they turn blank and if they are, we add the power-up we want to the world. There are also some that reveal coins, but the coins don't really do anything, so that's pretty straightforward to code. First power-up is the Mega Mushroom, whose job is to make Mario big. But first we need to upgrade our state logic. So instead of hard coding which sprites to change, we set them as variables and whenever Mario receives a power-up, we just change the variables to the sprites of that power up works like magic the last power up is the fire flowers they turn mario into whatever this is called and make him shoot fire so i added shoot fire method to mario which adds fireballs to the world make them shoot left or right depending on where mario is facing and then kill enemies on contact they are also bouncy so i added gravity to them and make them jump on collision with the top of a platform and finally the flag of victory this indicates the end of the first world and it basically just slides mario down Okay, so maybe coding two levels in one day was a little bit ambitious, but whatever, we've already gone this far, so might as well finish. The best part about level two is that I almost don't have to do anything. Its logic is the exact same as the first level. The only new things were the piranha plants and levitating platforms, which were a breeze to code. But I still felt the game would feel incomplete without Bowser. But since he doesn't show up till the end of the stage, I decided to just add him in the second level. But unlike the other enemies, he does have a bit of intelligence, so I had to put in a bit more work. It took me about 30 minutes, but I was able to put together an AI where he can follow Mario around, not fall into pits, and also shoot fire from his mouth randomly. 
And of course, what's a Mario game without music? I added the respective music for each level as well as the sound effects where they are needed. And that's the game. If you're curious to know how long it took me to finish everything, I wasn't really in a hurry after I filled the challenge. So roughly about three days in total. I had to go back to optimize some parts of the code and also there were some bugs here and here I had to fix. But overall, I had fun working on this project. I am not going to be hosting it for obvious reasons, but if you want to try it out, I will drop a link to the source code in the description. Also, I made the code serverless so you don't need to worry about any NPM shenanigans. Just open the browser file and you should be fine. Also, we're closing in at a thousand, so make sure you subscribe.